Okay, so we talk about the value of signals mm -hmm. and, and how they can really, uh, you know, expose elements or, or something as part of an attack and really help us get a, a handle on what's going on. So Risk IQ specializes in collecting signals, um, and we do this through a number of different means, um, but we're collecting a lot of information as depicted on the slide there in a number of different uh, hexagons. These data sets are just some of the ones that we have. Um, there is more, and it's always growing. Uh, but it's important to note these are some of the signals that we'll be working with in the, the workshop. So what, what, why is it so important to use like a global uh, proxy network to be able to do your traffic when we're collecting this data? Why is that important? Yeah, so having proxies uh, all over the world and, and functioning um, for us to, to have our traffic egress through is important because some attackers or the more sophisticated actors may choose to only deliver their malicious payload to a particular region. Um, they may only look for browsers that are running a certain uh, language pack, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and if we don't have a presence in that country, we may not actually see the malicious event taking place. Or the threat actor might say, we're blocking all traffic from Risk IQ's IP space, yeah. so you can't come at all. Or yeah. the victim's traffic, so they can't go research if that's really an attack or not. Yeah, so I mean, being a, a security company, it's it's uh, it, it can be challenging because we end up on the radar of attackers. People want to get past our defenses. Mm -hmm. They don't want to emit signals that we're capturing. Um, and so having those globally placed sensors all over the world and, and frequently rotating them um, is extremely important. Um, it's also important too that that we're you know we're not only just egressing through different locations, but we're also instrumenting uh, pretty powerful tools to collect information as well. And so our headless web crawlers, what we typically call virtual users, mm -hmm. are conducting billions of requests a day. And much like you go uh, and surf the internet with your browser, um, our headless web crawlers are doing the same thing. They're collecting all of the information as if they were a user in a browser, um, including clicking around, scrolling, et cetera. Acting like what our parents would do. <laughs> yeah, you know, clicking around, maybe clicking on links they shouldn't be doing, yeah. getting redirected and potentially served mm -hmm. malware. Uh, the benefit that we have there is that this is all automated. It can be done at scale, mm -hmm. and we don't have to worry about getting infected with malware because these aren't running on real full-fledged hosts. So they're acting like like any type of device and operating system coming from different points of presence around the world. So it's acting like the intended victim, so then it can see what's happening out there. Yeah, if you if you pair the concept of, of our web crawler and our ability to tune them to make it look like anything that we want, along with our globally placed sensors, really have a powerful capability there. I think what else is important here too is that if we just simply relied on us performing the crawls and, and going out and seeking things online, mm -hmm. we may miss a lot. And so we've actually gone through and instrumented ourselves to perform regular internet scans on a routine basis. And we're looking at all of the IPv4 space, scanning for uh, over 100 ports being open and collecting the banners and headers from that. Uh, and not to mention collecting some uh, open source intelligence results and mining that information as well. So with, with that information and, and linking that together, um, we, we have a, a nice map of the internet or, or a nice signal map of, of what's out there on the internet. Yeah, and what's important here too is that you'll notice we have a number of different signals at our disposal, and that's simply because actors evolve over time. You know, one day they may be using uh, their own registered infrastructure but then we might burn their operations or expose some of the elements, mm -hmm. and they may choose to go to a third-party cloud provider. Now, what's the problem with a cloud provider? Well, the infrastructure is constantly changing, evolving the IP space. They can spin it up, spin it down, move it all around, yeah. and it's hard to track. Yeah, it's difficult to track. So, so a data set like passive DNS may become less useful for us. And so that's why we had to expand or continue to always expand our data sets and look for new signals. And so where we might lose out uh, on you know, the passive DNS connection uh, between you know, finding new websites, we might have crawled that infrastructure and found that there was a unique tracker uh, or cookie that was being deployed on the web page that allows us to make a connection to that infrastructure. So as the infrastructure moves and they still have that same, that same tracker, that cookie or analytic code, then we can link that infrastructure and say, hey, it's the same or it's associated with it. Absolutely. The point here that we're trying to get is signals are important. And we want as many of them as possible because the more that we have, that means that the, the higher fidelity connections we can make. The, the better the decision you can make to say if this is really bad or not. Absolutely.